You've asked for it, I've asked for it, and now the time has come to see some actual gameplay footage from Total War Warhammer 3. Now, in this case, I did not play this battle. This was played by a CA community representative, but he does say he's a pretty good player, and based off what I've seen, I would definitely say he's middling to average, much like myself. Now, in this, you're going to see the Ogres assaulting a Cathay major settlement of Wei Jin. Now, I was really curious, because we got to choose from a lot of battles, how the AI would handle the defense of a siege. It's one of the big questions that we had coming into the reveal here. And so in this video, hopefully we can put those rumors to rest and really see what's going to happen. Now you'll notice right off the bat that this isn't going to be just a typical battle video. In a couple moments, there's actually gonna be a cinematic mode that were kicks in at the same time. See, they went back and then re-recorded the battle replay in one continuous shot. So occasionally we'll be cutting away to some nice, pretty, fun things to look at. So it's not just gonna be just overhead view the entire time. Look up at the top of the screen up there and you'll see the new siege system. So these are the different zones you need to capture. The horn is one that I believe affects leadership bonus. The various supply boxes right there are supplies the defender can use against you. And the hammer is the victory point you were trying to capture. Once you capture that, that's the battle. And now let's go to some cinematic view for a second. Right away, we get to look at one of the Beastmen's new units, the Stone Horn and a couple of old ones we've seen before, which are very fun, the Morn Fang Cavalry, as well as the new Legendary Lord. And you'll see that this battle itself juts out. This is almost a full 360 degree siege, and we're definitely having to assault from three different areas over here to take this gates. But you'll notice the ogres do not use siege equipment because they all already have the wall attacker and gate attacker attributes. So you can just run them right up there and whack away instantly when the battle starts. No need to wait around and give your enemies precious time for reinforcements. Now you'll see here the cafe has their looks to be guns pointed the wrong way, which is a little concerning there, but these weapon teams are mounted onto the walls, which does answer a whole different question that I did not think we'd be getting an answer to here. Okay. Positioning, making sure to get all three of our forces assaulting at one time. This is one of the problems with these multi-different levels of siege is that you have to have three different groups you are controlling and three different assault forces, and you really don't want to lose track of them there. Mmm, looks like they're getting some buffs. Better watch out for that. Okay, trying to break in through the door. Looks like we are taking some casualties on the Orc Bulls. I'm sorry, the Ogre Bulls. And you'll notice a new unit down there at the bottom we haven't seen before, the saber tooth tiger cat things, the Noblars and some Noblar Trappers, which give a speed debuff. And the walls are already down, so the ogres can start working their way inside. No need to punch any more holes. The big boys have already done it. But we're working on the front gate as well. Although you'll notice, they've already punched a hole right beside it there. So, let's go ahead and start redirecting those forces and hope to see them come through pretty quickly here. Uh, it looks like Cathay is pretty well set up to try and flank around them. You'll notice you're getting ready in position here to try and stop them coming through that front gate. I don't think you're going to be able to stop them though, but they are moving in the big boy, the big Chungus himself, the stone version of Guan Yu, which will uh, undoubtedly cut his way through these guys, the Terracotta Sentinel. Uh, what you'll notice here, we the ogres are getting in on multiple sides. Of all the factions, this is probably the one I'm most excited for. It's just look at them flailing around and killing everybody. Just absolutely beautiful there. And the great big gray guys that you're seeing that are going around and killing folks are called gorgers, by the way. Gorgers are ogres that have been cast out from society and have had to resort to cannibalism just to survive. So they're even nastier, hungrier, angrier than all the others. Okay, now the Lotus, we're coming through the gate here general fight, but no amount of defensive lines are going to be able to stand against an ogre charge. But hey, what's this? Let's see if we have unique animations. I know you're thinking it. And boom! He's definitely hitting a monster creature. Now, I can't say for sure if that's specific to the giant, but we can say that that at least is just dedicated to monster attacks. So much going on. So much to see. So little time. Look at him going at it there. Who's going to win? I think the Terracotta Sentinel will win. I don't see the ogre beating a giant terracotta thing with a bunch of halberds, but I could be wrong on it. 
All right, looks like the Cathay is pouring fire into the Ogres. One of their main weaknesses, I suspect, in game is that they're going to be quite slow, so they're going to be easy prey for long range. It's concentrated, and they have nothing that's very good against aerial attacks. So if you have good, strong aerial skirmishers, like, say, Wood Elves, or even Cathay, it's quite possible that it's going to be hard to actually defeat them. Okay. Looks like uh, our player here forgot to bring his cavalry in, probably because that gate was ha fight was happening at the gate there. Excuse the doggo in the background. She is as, just as excited as I am. Oh, looks like we have some saber-toothed cats ready to do some damage, possibly sneak around maybe and take a point uncontested. Uh, but the fighting in the streets is still intense. I'll notice Cathay is doing a pretty good job of keeping those, checkpoint, uh, those choke points and trying to manage where the ogres are headed, but I will admit, I haven't seen a lot of construction so far. I haven't seen a lot of walls, I haven't seen a lot of towers. But they are making sure to keep their ranged guys pouring fire into the advancing ogres. Okay, what do we got? Looks like we're bringing the cavalry in, bringing in that second line of reinforcements, making sure to keep punching those holes. And uh, the Noblars have managed to flank around the side and are taking one of the supply points. Uh, just like the ogres are overrunning the city. Looks like Cathy will not be able to stop them in this case. Um, I, I will admit, I wondered if these siege battles initially, and I said this in my own video, how long they would take. And I was really worried based on the descriptions, these would be 20, 30 minute videos, possibly even 40, that these sieges would take forever and just be interminable. And I'm happy to say I'm wrong. You can see just how fast this is going. We're already halfway through this battle right now. Um, it is coming to an end very quickly, and it doesn't look like Cathay is going to be able to do much to actually stop it. Okay, let's see. All right, moving the guys around, making sure to get people moving. You'll notice that big defensible bridge right there going into that final point, and it looks like we're gonna try and do a sneak attack and bring some cavalry to the undefended capture point. So the AI, uh, despite doing a pretty good job of keeping the ogres at the walls and fighting through the streets, did not leave anything in reserve to actually stop our advance, but who needs to when you get some ogres fighting terracotta sentinels, which is a lot of fun. And you'll notice that little balloon right there is flying around completely free, completely unfettered, just blazing away at any ogres it comes across, because again, rogers don't have a whole lot of ranged options. On the right-hand side, you'll notice a special bar that is the unique abilities of the Ogre factions. Most factions have something like this that fills up as the battle progresses in Warhammer 3, and this one fills up as they take more captives, and it gives them three increasingly powerful spells to play with. Man, Cathay is really putting those ranged weapons to good use here. Look at them just pelting away at those giants down there. It's part of the problem with being large, just nothing to really you can do to stop that kind of stuff. But you'll notice they're holding that checkpoint so well. There's only just key things that have to be held, and that's all it takes. Again, the AI's doing a pretty good job of it. Uh-oh, looks like Scrack the Slaughterer has been standing outside this entire time. Uh, well, what can you say? When there's big battles like this, you're attacking from all the flanks, you will forget about these occasionally. You'll notice we're getting a look at his new spells over on the right-hand side, deciding which one will be the one to bring in. Um, Scrag the Slaughter will be the closer to the Mage Lord, and Grease's Goldtooth will be the Melee Lord. Uh, if you're wondering which of the two you're curious to play, but this is gut magic instead of typical magic lores as you would know it. Almost consider it the lore of ogres, if you would. I'm bringing in the Stone Horn with the Harpoon Launcher. Now, it has been confirmed, unfortunately, that the great big fan favorite, the hugest, the biggest, the Thunder Tusk, will not be available when the game launches. Though, considering it and the Stonehorn seem to share a lot of physical characteristics, I expect it to be a very early mod, to say the least. Uh, I guess some Jade Warriors trying to stop the charge here, but you'll notice there's not a lot you can do when you have some guys riding giant woolly rhinoceroses. Because the Ogres, baby, that's what they do. They're fat, they're big, they're gonna eat you when they're done. Possibly in that order, who knows. Okay, I see some Noblars fighting against Jade Warriors here. I don't expect them to last very long as they're pretty much just souped up goblins. And uh, these ogres don't particularly care about them. Ooh, oh, we got a good spell coming in. Boom! Baby, she's the wheeze. Oh, look at that, even got a little bit of, let's see that again from another angle. Man, that was, that was sweet. That's exactly what you wanna see from your magic right there, especially in these tight choke points. Go in, 
have one good wind spell, one good vortex spell can completely clear out a choke point and allow you to do so much to move through the cities like this. So magic looks to be increasingly important in this game, especially when it's the only thing that can really move the troops out of the way like that, physically push them. Um, you know, obviously some charges, but you sort of just trample them down at that point. Looks like we're chasing down the last few remaining Jade Warriors, kind of getting a bit of a bog down here, but that's okay. All right, all the forces are looked to be advancing into the middle of the city here, trying to take it up to the second tier, the elevated area, and Cathay generally still holding on, not doing great on their defense. All of them pretty much running away at this point. They seem to be more cleaning and sweeping up the leftovers. Ooh, we're about to get a good charge from behind here. That's the thing about these narrow alleys. If you uh, get them from behind, there's not a lot they can do. Come on, you can do it, ogres. I know what you want to do. I see that rear charge waiting to happen there. Oh, it looks like they're tangled up in their own fight. Never mind. But let's see if they can get those reinforcements around behind them. To try and give a little bit of assist. Because that's the thing. If you can move and you can flank inside these city streets, it makes a big difference. And you'll notice just how wide these city streets are. There's a lot of positioning happening here. Uh, if you've played Total War Three Kingdoms, this map design is clearly based on that exact same concept. I mean, just look how big this is. This is all that same map. And obviously up there is not part of it, but down there still is. And what's that? Oh man, some sneaky saber tooths have been snuck onto the actual capture point. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you'll notice up there at the top of the screen, the major capture point has been taken. So the victory points are now in the hands of the victors. And just like that, boom, that's the end of the battle. That's it. And the whole battle lasted, what was that, seven minutes, eight minutes, uh, 11 minutes, <laughs> counting the actual time that you uh, position troops on the battlefield. I gotta say, I was wrong, and I like being wrong. I was worried that these fights would take entirely too long. You'll notice some lead belters down there, and oh, I'm sorry, those are ogres with pistols and a couple lead belters shooting at that poor hapless balloon. I don't think he's gonna make it, folks. but. I'm glad I was wrong. I, I like to be wrong, because if I'm wrong, that means something's better than I thought it was. And man, that does feel good. This battle felt punchy, it felt fun. You could feel the hectic nature of it. You could feel the excitement of trying to fight your way in through the levels. But I didn't see a lot of building and construction from the AI. It's possible we just missed it and that maybe they were using this new supply system, but as is, they did at least put up a pretty good fight and had pretty good positioning to try and counter the three different pronged attacks. But when you have a whole army of units that can just siege and knock down any wall they want to, I gotta give the AI credit. I'd have a hard time fighting that myself. But this was the first bit of actual siege gameplay we've been able to see in Total War Warhammer 3. Obviously a bit stylized here by me to keep it more entertaining, but what did you think? I gotta say, it works decently good. Clearly there's still some tweaks that need to be happening, but overall, it seemed to put up a pretty good fight. The AI wasn't steamrolled by any means. If you enjoyed this type of video, let me know. I'll try and do another breakdown coming in the very near future when the rest of the embargoes lift. But in the meantime, leave your comments below and obviously give me some of your thoughts. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. The great move. Clarins are never.